We couldn't have asked for a better place for him to be. I don't think there is anywhere better to end your life. It's somewhere special because they make every minute count. This place, it's just an outstanding place. You've got to really come to see it before you understand it. I can't praise them enough. I really cannot praise the, the nurses especially. All the nurses were so nice and they were all so happy and cheerful and it was just a really nice environment. And it was, it was really comfortable coming here and knowing that Mum was going to be in safe hands in a good place. We'd had a, a pretty scary experience at home and we were very frightened and when we came here that all just disappeared because we knew the people here would look after him and keep him free from pain. They treat everybody as if they're somebody special. Well, I felt a bit sad when Dad told us that she had um, died. But I was like, I think I was actually glad that she died like here, because it was probably the best, like, best place to die, because she was well taken care of. So that was a pretty upsetting time, but I think Thought Paul has definitely been the best thing ever since Mum had died. Obviously with what happened with Teresa, our lives would have changed, but um, with Jane's help, we have been um, able to adapt to that change so much easier. Thought Paul the place is something that gets under your skin. Um, when I first started here, I thought, my goodness, this is an amazing place. You've got people doing incredible work in very, a very difficult environment. I'm one of the team leaders at Thought Paul, um, leading the nursing team um, to give um, specialist palliative care to anybody that's got an incurable disease whether that be um, any of the cancers or motor neurone disease, MS, um, heart failure, renal failure, you know, the list is endless really. Um, we take patients in for symptom control, for respite, um, that's to give families a rest and um, time out. And then of course we do end of life care. The concept of a hospice is still quite scary to a lot of people. And so when they do come in, they realise it's very home from home. Um, they've got their own space. Um, it's quite laid back. Um, and there's not a routine as such. It's not very formal. Um, but, you know, we get everything done and that just makes them feel at home and they can relax a lot better. Bob was a larger than life character. He was diagnosed with bladder cancer just around his 65th birthday. And from diagnosis to death was only five months. The last three weeks were quite something special for us as a family. He was well cared for, well looked after, and they all went the extra mile to help him. The one day there was a wedding at the, in the hall and we heard the piper playing. Spoke, I was talking to Bob about it, although he was unconscious. We tried to talk to him as much as we could. And 
The sister heard us talking about this and asked if Bob was interested in pipe music, at which point I told her he was learning to play in a pipe and drum band. And she sent one of her nurses down to ask the piper if he, if he would come and play for him. And he came, the piper came up and I think he played about three tunes and it was so moving, so poignant. It was his last weekend alive and it really made us realise that Bob, although unconscious, he could hear what was going on. He knew what was going on. He raised his eyebrows and gave us a lovely smile and it just made everything fade into insignificance, really, really poignant moment. for the spiritual support of anybody who comes into the building really. So that's the patients, it's their families, their friends to be alongside so that the patient or the family feel that they can talk about anything, feel that they're heard and feel that they're understood. I think if you're left at home and not doing the things that we're doing here, you become depressed and, and every little twinge that you have is heightened because you, that's all you've got to think about. Uh, when you come here, you leave everything at home. It doesn't matter what's going on there. It has made me brighter and easier to get on with, I think. <laughs> As I said, I just enjoy coming. It's made such a difference, particularly to Tone, my husband, and he can then go off and do different things that he doesn't have to worry about me. He knows I'm safe here at Thorpe Hall and I'm being looked after. We need people to donate money to Thorpe Hall. Um, we need a million pounds a year to keep going with the care that we're giving. Um, we're the only specialist palliative care unit in this area, um, so without us that service just wouldn't exist. And so we need people to donate, to do fundraising activities and anything they can to give us some extra money. The boys are trekking the Sahara for a 100 kilometre trek and they've actually raised over £5,000 now for Thorpe Hall. They just wanted to do their bit because their dad was looked after so well. And uh, he lived life to the full and that's what they want to do. So they will be remembering him every step of the way. I would like to see Thorpe Hall continue as it is and expand to give help to every other people in the same situation as I've had and children have had because I've just found it absolutely magnificent, I really have. Whatever you can do, get involved, do something different, you'll have an incredible experience. There'll be highs, there'll be lows, but you know what? It will all be really worth it in the end. So get out there and get fundraising. Some people believe that once you're diagnosed with a life-changing illness, there is little left. We don't. We don't. We don't. We don't. I don't. Help us by supporting Thorpe Hall Hospice. Log on to suerider.org. Or call us on 01733 I don't think there is anywhere better. It's somewhere special because they make every minute count. <laughs>